Welcome back. It's, it's taken quite a few minutes for us to actually set this up. So what I'd like to do is take some time out to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it and, and how we're doing it. We're actually testing coil on plug. This is one of the exact coils fitted to this vehicle. They often give trouble. The advantage is that you can isolate the coil problem to one cylinder and therefore change just the one unit, but we need to be a little bit more objective. We need to prove the coil's faulty in a technically intelligent way. We are denied access to actually using an inductive pickup, and often using an inductive method through the body of the coil creates a lot of interference. So, what we've done to this coil is a voltage and earth supply. In this coil is the power stage, so the actual current is controlled within the coil, not the computer. That's to our advantage, because to switch the power stage on and off, there must be a digital control signal, trigger. So we're setting channel 1, blue, to that digital control pulse from the computer. We're running live now, by the way. That stabilises the scope image, so I've done several things. I've set a time base at one millisecond, one thousandth of a second per division. I've set up the triggering pulse with a, uh, with a negative edge trigger. And that trigger indication means that it's been stabilised on the screen with a repeat trigger. So in other words, every time a successful event takes place, the screen update uh, also uh, updates the new information. I've then connected current to either the power or the ground circuit. It does not matter which. And you'll see there's a, a tremendous amount of current in this type of coil. It's pulling just shy of 16 amps. About 15 amps is about the correct level. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that the coil is being triggered by the computer. That's the first good news. Because we've got 16 amps, I now know the power supply and ground to this particular coil, or to the circuit that we're testing, is actually correct. But what about the burn time? What's happening there? Now the way we're going to actually pick this up is to use, in fact I'll show you the actual probe, there's nothing uh, special about this at all. I'm simply using an extension probe and I'm going to probe around the coil to obtain the best possible image. Now I'm going to have to lean across camera a little for this but bear with me and what I'd like to do is introduce this now across the coil. Now the essential thing really also to, to mention here is that the sensitivity of this has been set to 200 millivolts because we're using the inductive reactance of the coil to introduce the signal into the probe. We're not connecting to any cables. We're only connected around one cable for current and into one circuit for the actual triggering pulse. Now if I introduce this to the coil, and I'll try and uh, freeze the image on the screen, which I think I'm just about to do. So we're holding that now just on the top of the coil, freeze the screen. Now you can see, quite simply, we now have three events to view. We have the triggering event. And you can see that through inductance, the reaction in the green probe shows the coil being switched on. So the initial onset of current switch on spark has taken place. The charge phase, the primary, a little bit of resonance here when the charge has been turned off, because clearly, here's your current rise, current interruption, that's the instant that the uh, coil induces high voltage into the secondary circuit, and therefore down to the plug, because obviously that takes place within that physical environment. There's no HT lead as such. But this is the event we really want to see. This is a reflection of the spark time. And this is the point at which the spark depreciates, um, diminishes, if you like, within the coil winding. There's always some residual energy, and that causes a resonance in the coil, in the secondary uh, winding of the coil. So the, the bit that we're actually interested in here now is the actual burn time, spark duration. And we can estimate this now very accurately between those two points I've just mentioned which is the collapse, the induction process. The induction process at the, the coil induction period, which is there, and the coil ringing, the oscillation, which is here. 
and the delta time between the two is 1.8 milliseconds which is absolutely spot on for this uh, particular system 1.8 thousandths of a second and indeed just with rule of thumb measurement you can see here that the zero baseline in milliseconds one millisecond per division two milliseconds here so it really it's near enough simply to estimate it if you want an accurate measurement bring the two cursors across measure the delta differential and then we have a very accurate measurement of the burn time of that particular coil all we need to do now is transfer the test to each coil um, and repeat the test if you really wanted to question the coil I don't recommend this but it's always possible if you suspect the actual coils faulty you can transpose one coil into another cylinder and conduct the test um, using a different component but really what we see here is quite conclusive we can measure current power grounds like we did in the original filming um, burn time done by the process of inductance simply by touching the, the probe get the best image on the signal freeze the screen and then review the data extremely successful it's worked well for us um, it does not remove the need for physical examination that's quite important so preparation is something I never underestimate examine the plugs examine the physical condition of the coils look for signs of uh, tracking water ingress etc correct that first before uh, conducting electronic tests but an entirely satisfactory test